Okie dokie, let's fix our bow and arrow situation. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check my data table because I'm pretty sure, yeah, wood arrow never had. It has to have an item class associated or else it won't be able to be equipped right. So I'm just do that real quick. Bam. Okay. So now I need to go into my player blueprint. I'm going to open that up. And I'm going to find my attack system from my ranged. First thing I want to do is I want to grab out my arrow info under gear. Yeah, we set it up a long time ago. So I want to make sure that we actually have an arrow equipped. So I'm going to break this open and I want to see if this is a valid class. I'm going to add a branch. I'm not going to add a branch. I'm just going to, from this one, do an and boolean and then we'll check both things. So can we attack and do we have a arrow equipped? So I'll back all this up just a little bit and bam. Just like that, not going to be able to fire anything anymore. So now we need to go up to our equip arrows function, which we have not used at all. So just like we're doing with all the other equipment, we're going to need an add an input here. That will be the arrow info. That will be an item info struct variable type. Now when we equip arrows, we want to first see if we have any arrows equipped. And then if the classes match, then we want to add what we're trying to equip to our current stack. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break open that info. Then I'm gonna grab out my, I just had, oh, <laughs> I'm gonna grab this out. Then I'm gonna break it open. Now I wanna compare these, so I'm gonna see if the class is equal. Oop, I'm gonna hook that to the branch. Plug that in right there. And if it's not equal, hmm, actually, I could have probably, this should be fine. We want to see if we have arrows equipped at all. Should probably do that before. All right, I'm going to back this up a little bit. Do it a little out of order, but it'll be fine. So let's see. I'm going to add a branch to the beginning. And then we want to see if we have arrows equipped at all. So if we do, then we want to check and see if it matches. If we don't, then we can just go ahead and bypass a lot of stuff and just say, all right, let's set our arrow info to the info coming in. So now if the arrows don't match, but we do have arrows equipped, then we want to do a pickup item function for our arrows that are equipped. so that we can set our arrow info to the new stuff. So set arrow info. I'm gonna promote this to a local variable so we don't have to cross a bunch of wires up. And I'm gonna call it current arrow stack or just something like that. That'll work right there. So I can just drag this out. The reason I'm doing a local variable is because I don't want it accessed everywhere. It just needs to be inside this actual function. But that way I can just have it right here. I don't like, well, you know, I don't, I don't like wires crossing everywhere. All right, so now if the item classes do match, then we need to get our arrow info break it open, grab one more copy of it so we can set the arrow info. We're gonna, nope, we're gonna make item info. I'm gonna go ahead and hook this to the true. And I'm gonna drag all of this way over here because we're gonna need to do this. Right 
rearrange it just a little bit. All right, so I'm going to plug everything in except for the current stack. What I'm going to do with the current stack is I am going to add. I want to add the arrows coming in from our current stack that's coming in. So I'm going to break it open and plug that right there so we can set our new current stack to the size of uh, what we've got and what we're putting in. So we'll plug all this all just like this. Whew, okay. All right. That should be everything we need for equipping our arrows. So just a quick recap. We are checking to see if we have arrows equipped. If we don't, then we're setting the arrow equipment info to our incom <clears throat> incoming arrows. <coughs> Sorry. All right. If we do have arrows equipped, then we're checking to see if they're equal to the ones we already have equipped. So if they are not, then we're picking up the old stack and setting a new stack. And if it is, then we're adding the incoming stack to our current quiver. Now from the end of both of these, so since it's from the end of both of these, I'm gonna move that, whoa. I'm gonna move that up. That went rapid. And then I'm gonna move this back a ways, okay. So now from right here, just like we did when we equipped everything else, so just like when we equip the bow at the very end, we're checking to see if the menu ref is open. Since it will be when we're equipping stuff, we don't actually have to check if it's valid, but I like to keep that there just in case. I'm going to copy that and paste it here and then hook both ends directly to it, just like that, so that we're always updating our equipment. Oh, and then, oh yeah, from the, um, from that one also. So every ending line should plug into this. So now when I come in here, let me get some arrows. Equip my bow, equip my, equip my, equip my arrow. In our player blueprint, under the use item function, when we equip arrows, we want to call our equip arrows. Arrows. Equip arrows. Equip the arrows. Bam. And then we'll do just like that. So yeah, that's, um, yeah. We don't have to actually destroy and spawn it. We can just plug it in right there. So now, now when I equip arrows, yeah, all right, so I've got arrows equipped in my quiver, and then if I take them off, I'm only equipping one, it seems, but we're going to fix that in a little bit. We just want to make sure that it was updating in there. Oh, one more thing we can check real quick. Let me pick up a bow and just see if I can even fire it. Can't fire it, that's good, that's what we want. That's the good stuff, okay. All right, so the problem with it removing the thing is uh, we actually need two versions of this remove item because we have to tell it, now we're gonna have to update it with how many we're removing since the arrows don't stack in one and our remove item function just removes one at a time then it's not quite functioning as needed. So I'm gonna copy this and move it down. Plug it right here. Now I'm gonna to go to the remove item function. Oh, wait a minute. Gotta set that item info up so it knows what item info it's removing. Okay, so now in our remove item function, we need to add an input because we need to tell it how many. So this is going to be amount removed and it's going to be an integer. 
So we are going to need to plug this in here. And we are also going to remove from here. So now when we call that item function, for like when we pick up the arrows and equip them, we want to remove all of them at once instead of equipping one at a time. So now in our use item function up here on this one, we can just hardwire that one to be one. Then how many we want to remove from our arrows down here, we're going to break it open and we're going to remove our current stack size so that it removes everything all at once. So just to show you. So I got 10 arrows, which I'll maximize. And now, there you go, hey, look at that. All right, and then when I pick it up, hey, I got 10 again. Now there are some fixes we will need to do for this. So for instance, anywhere that we're calling the use item function. So if I go find my HUD elements, menu icon, 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 inventory icon. So it's just using the item. Okay, so then this one doesn't need to be fixed. Um, our quest log, not that one though. So the quest thingy, quest system, quest icon. Okay, so at the end of this, when we're removing items, what we can do now is you can either leave it set up just like this and just put a one right here so that it continues the for loop, or we can delete this and this and just plug this get directly in. So what it's doing now, if you delete the for loop, it doesn't have to loop through and do it a bunch of times. It can just do it once because it's getting the value associated with that array index of the value that's associated. So it just automatically removes three. Now you do want to make sure what you can do, a good way of finding any references for this function, you can right click and find references. So now it'll pop up everywhere right here. That's a different remove, that's a different remove, that's a different remove, that's the only one. But anywhere that you're removing stuff, so like when we're selling stuff to the shop, for instance, let's just go ahead and fix that real quick also. So sales icon, uh, clear, right here. refresh, item removed, all right. So you can just punch in a one right there. And then we'll just do like find references. Now I think there is another way you can find references to functions of it. Let's see. Third person, let's see. Find, find, find. Find in blueprints, find in blueprints. One. Is there a function viewer? That would be really easy. Find in blueprints one. Enter function or event name to find. All right, so remove item. All right, let's see. Here's one that from the event graph. Quest system, quest icon. We already fixed that. All right, so event graph, third person blueprints, inner shopkeeper. We fixed that. This is a different remove item. This is a different. You can tell because it's an act. If it's got that that action event, it's um our actual function. So let's see. Remove item, yes. Remove item, good. Craft item, remove, oh yeah, the craft item. All right, so how many do we want to remove? And just like the other one, we can just boom, get rid of you, and just plug that in, and just right there. And that's good, and that's good. So again, if you need to find things, you can find in blueprints. What does find in blueprints do? Let's see. See if it brings up different things. Quest giver, quest icon, no? No, it's all the same. So yeah, just a really good way, just tools, find in blueprints, and you can search up your actual function. I'm gonna take a quick, oops, 
I'm going to take a quick look at what that red says at the bottom. Search incomplete three non-indexed out-of-date blueprints that need to be loaded into indexed. Loads all non-indexed blueprints and saves them with their search data. This may be things that just need to be compiled or something like that. I'm not sure. Oh, so compile that. And then let's see. Let me try I'm gonna give it a shot. This process can take a long time and the editor may be there. 27. <sighs> I'm not gonna do it right now because it's probably gonna crash my engine. But that's just the way you can do it. So like when you buy stuff, sell stuff, anywhere you're using that remove item function just needs to be updated a little bit. But you know, it's not too bad. So I think that actually should be all the it, various things that we're doing with it. Can't really think of anywhere else that we'd be using remove item other than in the player blueprint and stuff, but let's just take a look real quick. So now I get my bow, I get arrows. I equip my bow, I equip my arrows. Looks like it's equipping just fine. Let me try to fire. Now it's still, we haven't updated the firing yet, so it's still not going to register that I've used any arrows. So it still says 10, but the point is I can transfer them back and forth, equip, unequip. And we've updated our remove item function to work more appropriately, which let's just take a look real quick. I'm gonna try crafting something while y'all are here. Three, two, one. All right, so it's still removing from our crafting. It's all working well. This is just because of my crafting screen setup. That's unimportant at the moment. But yeah, so that is it for equipping the arrows. And in the next one, since this one's probably gone on so, so long, then we will update the firing mechanism. So I will see y'all in a bit. Bye-bye. Oh,